It's good to see yous. The two of yous, yeah. Oh my God, God bless yous. Come over on Friday. I'm gonna make the Basta Vazul. You'll love it. People are very precious about their recipes. There was a woman on my block named Mrs. Dia Giovanna Tonio. We used to call her Dia Giovanna Toenail because she had these disgusting toenails that looked like she had Frito's corn chips glued to her feet. But she was a great cook. And every time she made a recipe, she would never let anybody know what she was doing. She used to bust my chops with this all the time. One time she gave Mr. Guerriello the recipe for his wife to make meatballs. But instead of salt, she put sugar. Why would you do such a thing? You know why? She wanted her recipe to die with her. She was being selfish. Look, some Italian ladies are like this, not me. I think food equals love. The fastest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I tell you something, Nicky was a rat bastard, but he loved my cooking and he still does. I still send him over some Tupperwares with the kids because you know what? I'm not an asshole, he is. But let me tell you something. When it comes to food, Italians do it better than everybody else. We don't measure with cups and, and tablespoons and things like that. We measure with our heart. We grab a bunch of cheese and we just throw it in there. We grab a bunch of garlic powder and we schmutz it on there till we know what we're doing. Cause we feel it, we feel it in our gut. And that's why our food's better. Now, if you really want to get somebody, you could do what happens. <laughs> You're gonna die when you hear this, all right? It's crazy, but it happened to the Rappellianos. So, Mary Rappelliano, she cut a finger on something, who knows what happened, but she had on a Band-Aid. And she was making her meatballs and minding her own business. And one day, she took some of the meatballs and she gave them to her sister-in-law. Her sister-in-law's cooking meatballs, everybody's eating, they're sitting there and she has her father-in-law and they go into the meatball. He bites into the meatball and he's chewing and he's like, something's going on here and then he pulls the, the meatball out of his mouth and he's got the band-aid in his mouth. I couldn't believe it when I heard this story. The man ate a band-aid. There's no turning back from that, okay? That's disgusting. What are you gonna do when something like that happens? It's embarrassing. Now, in this case, if I ever did anything wrong to anybody, the first thing I would do is cook the meatballs. So what do you do when you cook them bad meatballs? How do you make up for it? For years, she wondered what she should do. Should I water their lawn? Should I get the mail when they go on vacation? Should I try to make them something else? But she could never make it up. So the lesson is, make sure that when you make meatballs, you make them right. Because if you make them wrong, you're screwed. And that's just it. All right. Well, it's good to see you too. I hope to see you next week. Because I'm telling you, every time I come here, I get a break talking to you. I really do. I love you all. This is just a really nice place. And I'll make you some meatballs. But I promise you, from the deep heart, when I measure every single ingredient, not a single one of them is gonna be a Band-Aid. God bless you, I love you, take care. Mwah! Say hi to your mother. <laughs>